and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1,000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for The Leghorn Blows at Midnight. And with me today to hopefully not blow this review is my good friend Manny Cruz. Say hi. Nice boy, but a little dumb. Yeah, yeah, he's right. <laughs> In any case... <laughs> few bits of info to get us started so this is as mentioned the leghorn blows at midnight it was released on the 6th of may 1950 with a blue ribbon reissue sometime in the late 50s it's the 588th in the series and it's directed by bob mckimson you can currently find this restoration on hbo max and it'll be nice if they can release this on a disc but who knows maybe one day we'll get a complete falcon leghorn collection because that would be really nice but anyway Ask a silly question, get a silly answer. So synopsis is pretty much like any other Falkhorn short that we're going to get from here on. But here we are, you know, Falkhorn once again is messing with the Barnyard Dog, as is spelled D-A-W-G. <laughs> and Henry Hawk thinking initially that the dog was a chicken, but he's then corrected by the dog to go after Falkhorn. And of course, we just get various gags throughout. So it's pretty much a formula at this point, which we'll discuss in a moment. But a few bits of trivia though. So starting for this short, Falkhorn Leghorn has a more refined design and it's pretty much the same design from here until the very end. And the title is based off of the Jack Benny film, The Horn Blows at Midnight, which was a huge flop for Benny. And of course the title's got nothing to do with the short itself. And there is a line that's attributed to John Paul Jones, who was an 18th century naval hero. So as I mentioned, we have our formula pretty much set, you know, Foghorn, the dog, and a third character, which was once again Henry Hawk in this case. So, first of all, Manny, did you enjoy this one? It's been a while since I've seen, I mean, I'm more familiar with the original Foghorn shorts like Walkie Talkie Hockey and Crowing Pains. And then I think of like the ones from, you know, the High and the Flighty and like go going into the period where everybody starts knocking McKimson for being kind of bland. But I have not seen this cartoon. I don't remember the last time I've seen this one. And it was such a breath of fresh air because it's just how dynamic the animation is in this particular cartoon. Like almost every scene or like the, not every scene, but the, the majority of the cartoon, it's either Emery Hawkins or Rob Scribner or Bill Melendez just going to town. And I'm not used to seeing Foghorn. And Barnyard Dog, yes, dog, like us New Jersey, New York folks say, uh, especially Foghorn and the dog, how insane they look and like their poses and, and how the animation goes. And it's it's so refreshing because, like you said, this is the beginning of the formula. I don't remember the formula being this dynamic and this like interesting to look at. And plus, you know, now that it's been restored in beautiful HD. It's just, it's, oh my God, it was like a feast to watch. And, you know, I guess I'll talk about a little more later, which is like with some of the voice work and just, of course, Foghorn Leghorn. I have a soft spot for him. I mean, as you all know, Porky Pig's my favorite character, but my father really likes Foghorn Leghorn because my father and Foghorn Leghorn both, both talk a lot and are grandiose in the way they are. But it's just like his little mannerisms. And this is like when the character starts really becoming refined. And I love the, the really deep voice whenever Mel Blanc does uh, Barney our dog i always get a kick out of that and you know henry hawk is always a fun character of course like father like son i'd say in terms of the talking but in any case man, yeah. <laughs> me being a windbag no never <laughs> <laughs> no i i kid of course i kid but no no you're right this is this is a great one even though yeah it's a formula short everything's in its place beautiful but we gotta love a few of the bits and pieces here. I mean, starting with the animation on the four corn being hit by the symbols. I mean, if you do that in slow motion, like you got some really weird drawings in there. It's such a good scene there. I absolutely love it. We both agreed before we discussed this cartoon about the shaving scene. Like, oh, how yikes. that's pretty brutal. I mean, we're both. <laughs> Men who shave our faces, and we... <laughs> uh, and or in my case, my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, but um, whenever I see a shaving scene like that, I just wince <laughs> because, you know, I, I know exactly how shaving with a really bad blade can feel, and yes, it's it's not very pleasant. But in any case, 
it's uh, maybe brutal to watch, but it's still pretty darn funny in this short. But I do like, though, that there's a bit of a twist in this one where right away... Okay, Henry's thinking the dog's a chicken, but they get out of the way where it's like, oh, no, I'm not a chicken. That's a chicken. He points the fog corner, and the rest of the short is basically that. And, of course, Henry gets twisted around a bit, but I like how they get that part out of the way first, which is pretty good. But that's just me. And we get a few nice little one-liners here, with my favourite being, of course... Ask a silly question and get a silly answer. <laughs> Amen I'm gonna start to that. using that. I'm going to start using that more often. I think so, so that's a great <laughs> one, and I'll, I'll probably mention that to, to my uh, kids if they ask me a silly question. But <laughs> and other animated bits I like, you know, animation of the dog under the glass. You know, you got to love that. <laughs> what are some of the other great gags in this one that you enjoyed? In the beginning. I really like the animation of Foghorn. Of course, when he's singing his classic Camptown races. But, like, in particular, when he's playing solitaire and, like, you see him looking around, he changes a card and he switches with another one while he's cheating in the game. But based on what I see, I'm either assuming it's either Rob Scribner or Bill Melendez that did that scene. And I'm not good at recognizing the animator, so please don't yell at me. Just that little subtle, like, looking around, like, is anybody seeing me? Oh, okay, here, I'm going to cheat in this card game. And while he's singing Camptown Races, that scene always makes me laugh. The pumpkin scene in particular, you know, like setting it up. And then, of course, when he gets hit, you know, asks a silly question. But I also really like when Foghorn starts walking around, you know, like a typical old man. You know, back in my day, we didn't have pumpkins. And, blah, blah, blah. and that was another one where I'm assuming it's Emery Hawkins who did the animation for it. But not only just I like fluidity of the animation there, but I also just love Mel Blanc just rambling on like an old Southern rooster, I guess. That's the only way to describe it. And it's, I always get a kick out of that. I like when Foghorn hits the dog in the face with the cake. And like he really, literally, he rubs it in his face, you know, like instead of just doing this typical pie cake in the face, it's like, nah, let me really make it hurt. And I never get, never get tired of the nincom. Boop. Nincom. I almost thinking of Daffy from Scrap Happy Daffy. One other thing that makes me laugh, but I, it reminded me of something. So the scene where Foghorn hits the dog in the head with the accordion and he starts playing it, I instantly think of the intro to Looney Tunes on Nickelodeon from the mid-90s. Because when the show starts, you know, here at Looney Tunes on Nickelodeon, then they would play like a weird version of Merrily We Roll Along. But one of the little clips that they use in the intro is that specific part where foghorn starts playing the accordion on the dog's head i also love how they actually plan out this whole running gag of the dog choking on the rope which is brutal in itself but at least we get a nice little payoff at the end i mean what do you think of that hey karma is it's always good what goes around comes around or for you uh i'm assuming star star trek for you nerds revenge is the dish best served cold and speaking of you know <laughs> choking and everything that's another thing that always makes me laugh, especially in these Foghorn cartoons. The barnyard dog barking and then yelping. Har, 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 yay! Whenever, <laughs> whenever the rope gets pulled, gets me every single time. But I will say, though, the ending, it was just, it was a little abrupt. I mean, like the line from Henry was funny, you know, oh, it doesn't matter who loses. I'm going to fricassee the winner or loser. But it's just like, I don't know if you agree, but like if the time, it was like a little too fast. Do you agree, disagree, or what? I like the ending. It just it, it, uh, It's not the greatest ending in the world or anything, but it wraps it up nicely and cartoon's over. So, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's a simple cartoon. Wrap yeah. it up and, you know, we, we all get fricassee. Well, not dog. I'll have a fricassee chicken, though. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. I mean, the opening title has a song, Put Him in a Box, Time in a Ribbon by Julie Stein and Sammy Kahn. And that was also used in another McKimson short that we talked about. <laughs> Boobs. Boobs in the woods. And in the scene in particular where Porky's painting the background and you hear that song and that scene. I just love the arrangement of it. Of course, you can't have a Foghorn cartoon without him singing Camptown Races from Stephen Foster. And everybody's favorite song that we all learned in preschool, Old MacDonald. But, you know, whenever Foghorn Leghorn sings it, it's amazing. You hear a little bit of Aloha Oi, and that made me chuckle a bit when Foghorn is putting the vanishing cream on uh, Henry Hawk. And in the little part that, you know what, I'm actually curious about your take about it. But the part where they start bringing up American history when they start talking about George Washington and John Paul Jones and... You know, the Revolutionary War and all these other parts of American history. You hear the Columbia, the gem of the ocean, and a little bit of Yankee Doodle as well. But I'm curious, like, what? how do you feel or, like, what's your thoughts whenever you see that scene where they go into, like, a little brief American history lesson as an Aussie? How do you see that? 
Well, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny because it's true, or I don't know, but <laughs> so, something like that anyway. Yeah, like but that. but it does make me look up some of that stuff. Like I mentioned, John Paul Jones. I had no idea who John Paul Jones was, but you know, you don't know he was John Paul Jones. He's a bass player for Led Zeppelin. Ah, oh wait, that's the. <laughs> a little music trivia. There we are. And then, there we you know, are. And then you got Robert Plant and, and Jimmy Pigs and John Bond. Okay. I like Zeppelin, in case anybody's curious. I do like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and, and what I also like is this cartoon. You know, I'll give it a nice, I guess, seven, <laughs> seven and a half out of ten. I think it's just generic Falkhorn, but it's a good one. It's funny. I enjoyed it. Start to finish. Nothing remarkable, though. What would you rate this one? Same score. Yeah. Beautiful animation, but it's, if you're familiar and this is kind of like my bugaboo or gripe with the Foghorn series and Pepe Le Pew and Sylvester and Tweety. Once you've seen one of them, you get the formula. But it's a nice start to the series. Seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But in any case, we'll wrap this one up here. That's amazingly less than 20 minutes with Manny. But anyway, <laughs> um, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, take care. If I keep going too long in these recordings, he's going to fricassee me. Yum, yum. <laughs> I've been, I say, I've been hornswoggled. <laughs> <laughs>